Hello and welcome to today's September 22nd daily news report, as well as ongoing stimulus package information video. If you're a subscribed member of my community, then welcome back. And if you're not, consider subscribing right now so I can keep you up to date on what's going on in Washington, D.C., the next stimulus package, money, investing, and much, much more. All right, this is your daily reminder to go sign up for the $10,000 cash giveaway that Casey and I are doing as a way of thanking you for helping get us to over 1 million subscribers. We're excited to give that money away. You can sign up each and every day to improve your odds, and it only takes about 20 seconds. I'll make sure to leave a link in the first pinned comment. All right, now, near the end of this video, I'm going to share a crazy story with you, and I definitely want to hear your reactions in the comments, so stay tuned till the end. Also, I just want to say how much I appreciate you guys giving these videos a like. I do hours and hours of research to bring you a very short summary of what's going on, and I hope you guys appreciate uh, these videos. Okay, now, last night in the House of Representatives, they passed a measure to keep the federal government funded until December of this year so that it wouldn't shut down the country, right? Now, the bill passed right down party lines. All the yeses were Democrats. All the noes were Republicans. Republicans are saying Democrats passed this bill because they don't want the debt ceiling battle to get in the way of the stimulus package and the infrastructure package Democrats are trying to pass. But Democrats are saying, that's just not true. All we want to do is avoid uh, the, sh the federal government shutting down. The bill is expected to be blocked in the Senate, and Democrat senators are already calling for the removal of the filibuster. So although it's exciting that this bill passed, the House of Representatives knew it wouldn't pass in the Senate, but they passed it anyway, and it's, it's what's going on in the news, okay? Now, Republicans want to shut down uh, over raising, or excuse me, the Republicans want a showdown over raising the debt ceiling because they believe they can use this as leverage to remove the wasteful spending of the $3.5 trillion stimulus package. So it's not to shut down the stimulus package, but to remove the wasteful spending, according to them. Now, this bill passed last night, uh, and there's just something in the small print that I wanted to bring to my community's attention. The Democrats wrote in that they want to do $6.3 billion to assist the 80,000 Afghan refugees President Biden flew into our country. Now, I feel like my show has become the who gets stimulus checks before the American people show. Uh, and I hate that that's what uh, comes out every now and then, but I feel it's important that we know where our government is spending our tax dollars. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of math with you. And you can check my math. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Okay. If you take 6300000000 and you divide it by 80000 that's $78,750 per refugee that was just brought into our country. Now, I want to hear from you. Wouldn't it be nice if the government gave you $78,750? That's essentially equivalent to giving 6,300,000 Americans a $1,000 stimulus check. Okay? Now, <laughs> maybe I'm crazy, or maybe I'm just not reading this right. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm being gaslighted. Like, everybody else matters but you. That's, that's what it feels like when I read these, these articles, right? But it seems like they want to raise taxes so that they can give big dollar giveaways to take care of non-American citizens. This is in the news. You guys can verify everything that I'm saying, but... Does this make anyone else mad? Or is it just me? Why, why are people being flown into the country and then they want to set aside $78,000 per person and they can't get you a stimulus check? 
Let, let me know, are you guys mad? Are you frustrated? Is this politics as usual or is this okay? Is it okay to use our tax dollars this way? Let, let me know in the comments. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm struggling today. Uh, maybe I'm crazy. I, I don't feel like I am. It just, uh, I don't know. All right. The U.S. government is dealing with multiple money issues. There is the government running out of money. There is the $1.2 trillion physical infrastructure bill that they can't get passed. There's multiple disaster release funds in the tens of billions of dollars because FEMA is running out of money. And there's the $3.5 trillion spending bill or stimulus package, right? Like there, there's so many things going on. Now, the government really has their hands full right now. Uh, and so I, I try to have empathy for what they're going through. I'm glad I'm not in politics. This is a lot to deal with. And this doesn't even cover the different battles and crises our country is dealing with. These are just the money issues. However, multiple Democrats have gone on record saying they are in control to not panic, to not worry. This is just part of the process. And we will get, get this massive change to America done for the people. So this is what House Democrat Caucus Chair Hakeem Jeffries of New York had to say. Failure is not an option. The vote will be there for both the bipartisan infrastructure agreement and the Build Back Better Act. So Representative Jeffries of New York is confident both plans can be passed while Democrats control all areas of the federal government. Now, notice he didn't call it a stimulus package or the American Families Plan. So they're, they're switching up what they're calling it. Instead, he changed the name to the Build Back Better Act uh, and believes that it will get passed. Okay. Now, Pelosi also put out a letter to her constituents or Democrat Party colleagues saying it was the Republicans that are making this hard to pass. She said they keep calling it a reckless tax and spending spree. This is why we can't get it passed. Now, I wish Pelosi would quit saying things like this because you and I are both smart enough to know that Republicans aren't even involved in the budget reconciliation vote. Like, that's the entire point of the budget reconciliation vote is that they need zero Republicans. So I don't know why Pelosi can't just admit that she's struggling to get her own party on board and that they need to get back to work. Instead, she keeps saying it's the Republicans, but we, we all know, we've been watching this for months. The Republicans aren't even a part of the budget reconciliation process. All right, Pelosi then said the Biden agenda must be pushed through for the American people. We need to invest in Obamacare subsidies, Medicare expansion, universal pre-K, child cash payments, climate change measures, and much, much more. Okay, This was part of her letter to her Democrat colleagues. She said, we need to be able to tax, tax the businesses and the American people to get this money. And then she said, we need to craft the bill uh, in a different way to get it to pass in the Senate under Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Then she gave no hint to what those changes might be. So my, my guess is, I'm just trying to read between the lines on your behalf, is she may be setting this up to go with a smaller number than $3.5 trillion. I don't know. Maybe they're going to pull some things out put some things in, rearrange it. I, I don't know. She didn't give any kind of clue. She just let her party know that they may need to craft the bill in a different way so that it can actually pass. So I'll, I'll be here to, to keep you updated on what those changes are. Now, yesterday, Pelosi held a private meeting with Progressive Caucus leader, Representative Primilla Jayapal. In that meeting, Jayapal told Pelosi that she needs to deliver on progressive demands and the $3.5 trillion uh, stimulus package, or the progressives will withhold their votes on the physical infrastructure bill. 
Essentially, she was threatening her. We're going to hold our votes hostage if you don't get us everything we want and you don't pass the $3.5 trillion spending bill at the $3.5 trillion package uh, price point. Now, the Senate has zero votes to lose in order to pass this, and the House of Representatives only can lose three Democrats or else the Biden agenda doesn't go through. Now, I'm not going to lie, uh, with Republicans out of the way, I honestly thought this would be a slam dunk bill. Like, I, I, I thought this should have been done by now, right? But uh, it seems that the fighting uh, between Democrats has been more than expected. Um, and there, this battle continues, right? All right, now, uh, this is kind of shocking. According to the New York Post and the Atlantic and a Rasmussen poll, 59% of Americans don't believe President Joe Biden will finish his full four-year term. What? Why, why, would they, why would they be saying this? Why, why do they think that he's not going to finish his four-year presidency? Here's the breakdown. 73% of Republicans think he won't finish four years. 49% of Democrats don't believe he'll finish four years. And 57% of independents don't believe Joe Biden will finish his first four years. Now, I'm going to run this same poll on my YouTube channel. So if you see it, please let me know by, by voting. But th this kind of shocked me. Bi Biden was so popular. What, what has happened? What's going on here? I'm also reading today that this week's Biden approval rating sits at 43% and that 53% of the country believes he's doing a poor job of running the country. Now, this is the first time in his presidency when his, where his disapproval rating crossed the 50% mark. So 50, more than half the country thinks he's doing a bad job. This is according to a Gallup poll, not Stephen Gardner, right? You can look these polls up. Right, but th this was kind of shocking to me. All right, now according to the Associated Press, the crisis at the border is over regarding the 15,000 or more Haitians that flooded Del Rio, Texas over the weekend. So how did this get resolved so quickly? Well, according to the article, the Biden administration is going to allow all of these people into the country. That's how it was resolved. They will get them on buses and airplanes before the week is over, according to this article. But these people had to promise that they will appear at an immigration office within 60 days. So these, these people that don't speak English, they speak Creole or French. I, I, I lived in the Caribbean. I know a lot of Haitians, beautiful people. But as long as they made that promise, then Biden's administration said, just let him into the country. That's how we solved the problem. So that's solved. So that's, that's, it's good to see that gets solved, right? Now, I'm, I'm sure most of them will show up, unlike the people from South America that are crossing at a different part of the Mexico-Texas border. Uh, those people, according to data from the Department of Homeland Securities, rarely keep their appointments and rarely show up to their court hearings, but I'm almost certain it's going to be different this time. Okay, now I'm sure you thought that these last few stories were the crazy stories because they sound unbelievable, but you can look them up for yourself. They are true. But I want to share this next crazy story with you, and I would love to hear your reactions in the comments. A family in Michigan is suing... Uh, for their seven-year-old daughter's school for a million dollars. So why are they suing their seven-year-old daughter's school for a million dollars? A few weeks ago, this cute little girl took a pair of scissors and cut off her beautiful curly hair and gave herself a haircut. The parents were devastated and paid a nicer hair salon in town to give their daughter an edgy, asymmetrical haircut, right? So it didn't look the same, but it was cool and it was edgy and it was purposeful to help her grow her hair back out and have it look nice. Well, when this little girl went back to school, the teacher noticed the hair and the little girl told her teacher how she had cut her own hair. Not knowing that the family had taken this little girl to a hair professional, the teacher took it upon herself to even things out and cut off the other side of her hair. 
Well, the parents are furious and they're now suing the school for $1 million. <laughs> oh gosh. What's your reaction to this story? Do you think the parents have the right to sue for a million dollars? Or maybe should it be a smaller amount? I know they're justified in being angry. Also, do you think the teacher crossed the line? Should teachers be cutting students' hair? I definitely want to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below. What, what's your reaction to this? All right, just a little bit of lighter news. All right, now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more. I want to say thank you to everybody uh, for your well wishes on uh, my back issue. Uh, I'm still in tremendous pain. I'm putting on a smile right now, uh, but uh, I'll be going to see the chiropractor again. And then today I'm going to go to a massage therapist to see what the heck is going on with my legs and my back. Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for your concern and your, your kind words. All right, now before you go, I'm going to leave a link below. Go sign up. Get your name and your email in to be one of the winners of the $10,000 in cash that Casey and I are giving away. We're only able to do this because of the sponsors that we run on our channel. And we're so excited to share that money with the winners uh, at the end of this month. Now, before you go, I just want to remind you that you are amazing. Just in case nobody tells you today, you heard it here from me. Hey, I appreciate you being in my community, and I'll see you on the next video.